Hey guys, it's Bob from Michigan Machinists, and we're going to talk about uh, some setup and uh, some projects we've been working on on the CNC mill. Hey, interweb people, this is Bob. Uh, we're going to show you some things today, and basically, I have a part I got a setup on. We call this a clevis. Um, it's got some machining, some wire work. I did the tops, the other part of this last week, um, and we just got a setup. So I'm gonna show you how we do things here. So first of all, if you're a machinist or even starting to be a machinist or machine operator, the most important thing you gotta have is the stance with the coffee. Hey, I'm just saying. Or you could do a monster or whatever energy drink you want, but coffee doesn't run out. So we're gonna show you, I got a piece of paper here and it's all my tooling. And this is from Alec Clevis Part B. Uh, and there's two different programs with a bunch of tooling. We got a print and we're gonna go to the computer and see how we did this program. So follow Moa over here. So we put Alec in a timeout today. He's singing too loud today, so we closed the partition off. Hey! Oh, hey Alec, what's going on, man? Yeah, you done up, man. man. Hey, can you show us uh, this part you sort of programmed? Sort of programmed. Well, we haven't proved it out yet, so. Okay. Maybe it crashes, maybe it breaks some tooling. Never know. Huh? But I have faith in Alex. So this is how we do it. We get the print in. Sometimes we've done the part before. Sometimes we haven't. Um, Alex got a model here. And I'm going to let him show you his magic a little bit. All right, so we're going to start by decking the part. Go on here in the simulation. It's going to deck it. It's going to spot. It's going to drill. And after that, it's going to go around the outside and make the shape of the part. Speed this up a little for you guys. And there it's going to, there's a cutout. It's a volume mill operation, it's basically a fast roughing out. Finish. Just gonna champ to the top, and that's it. That's the first stop. And then Bob's got a part here. Let me show you. So there's kind of the part we haven't uh, did this cutout yet. So so far in his rendering, he decked it, the top of this, and then he went around the part. So we got this height, this height, this length. Um, he did his holes, and he did this slot in here. And the reason we didn't do this cutout is because we're gonna hold on to it like this. And we're going to drill and tap, and we're going to hold on to it like this, and we're going to drill and ring. So that's why we haven't decked that yet. Yeah. All right. Alec, I'll see you later, man. Have a good day. Probably with some questions. Can't forget my coffee. You want to look at Ben? Come here. This is what we do once in a while. See if you can peek in on there. What's he doing? What's he thinking right now? Like what kind of bicycle parts has he got in his head? You know he's got six different pages open and he's got some bike frame or something. And as soon as I walk in there, he's gonna click five of them off. I don't care what he does, man, as long as he shows up every day. And he don't even have to show up every day. Ben could show up every other day. It would be fine with it. He didn't hear that, did he? <laughs> All right, we're gonna do some setups now. So what I didn't show you is uh, after on the Gibbs cam, we have Gibbs cam, and we'll get into more depth of all that. We put it on a card. Some machines take a USB stick, uh, some are hardwired in. We have a little card, and you literally shove it in, 
and you download the program. I've already done it, so we're not gonna get into that. And we're gonna go through our tool list, look for our tools, uh, get them together, and then set them in the machine. So I've done most of it already. I got a couple out here. So basically, uh, let's go tool two. He's got a spot, um, so it's already in the holder. But basically, I'm gonna look for a spotter. I'm gonna look for a tool holder to put it in. This one's in a collet. You're gonna put it in a collet. We have uh, these holders where we're tightening all our stuff up. And you, usually you gather up all your tools and then you set them all at once. And I've already done this earlier and I pulled out a couple tools to show you guys. So the next thing I wanna show you is how we set them. And that's for your height. So we use four and a half inches. We use a four inch block with a half inch uh, gauge block. All right, so we're gonna go to tool two. Right now I got tool three in the spindle. Um, so we throw it to MDI, M6 is a code to tell it to do a tool change. Tool two in the block, insert, and this arm's gonna come around, change tools. Now there's not a tool in there, but the machine thinks it has tool two. It doesn't know the difference. This thing ain't that smart. I have to tell it what to do. So this is my tool two. So I gotta switch it to handle and put my tool in. So my handle allows me to move the machine around, my Z, my X, Y. It could do the fourth axis or five axis, but we have a handset. A lot of machines have a crank. So I'm gonna by hand move this machine. All right. So all we're after is four and a half inches. And we're gonna come down to you keep sliding that half inch block until it can't go anymore. So I'm moving it with my one finger, a thou at a time. You can go in the tenths at a time, ten thou at a time. Um, and I know the tip of my tool is four and a half inches off of this table, that's it. And every tool in this carousel is set off of that. So if it's in the carousel, I never have to uh, teach my tools. So after I know where my height is, I'm going to go into this page and there's a couple different ways. This is my fixture offset, but this is my tool. And I got number two in here right now. So there's my height. So the machine knows it's got to come down 12 inches, 703 thou and seven tenths to be exactly at four and a half inches. It's just numbers, decimal numbers. I don't care what that number is as long as that's what it is. So I'm gonna set zero on this one. And really, I was six tenths off compared to where the machine was before, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. I went to an offset page, highlighted it's number two. Here's my machine Z, which I had set it previously. I'm six tenths off, but we'll set it for you guys. So this number doesn't exactly match, it's six tenths off, but I'm gonna hit measure. Now this matches that. So the machine knows it's gotta come down this far for that zero. <clears throat> that being said, I have to do another tool. So that was my spot and I got a drill. So he's calling for a number 330, uh, 328's close enough. Again, tool holder, right knob on the end collets, make sure it's tightened up, make sure your length is long enough. Um, and we're gonna change tools. So, which one was this? Number three. I was asking you, Steve. M6 tool tree in the black insert. Hit the grow go button.
Now I could set that one, but I've already got it set. I did it earlier, but it's gonna be the same way. Um, so I went through all my tools and they're all set. I got them all stored in here. The program's in here. Um, I'm gonna show you why we set it off four and a half and we're not doing anything to the part. So what we're gonna do is put this in the vise. This is the material we're using and we're gonna uh, figure out the difference from the top of the part to my four and a half inch blocks. All right. While we do that, I gotta scan these guys to make sure they're doing their shit right. I don't trust Craig. He looks too serious. Something's not right here. And then Alec ain't singing. Uh-oh, he heard me, Never mind. I gotta get back to work now. All right, so this is the material we're machining, where it's at, and I gotta know the difference. All my tools are set off of here, this surface, and I just wanna know the difference. So it's kind of a quick and easy thing. So I'm gonna go to an empty tool holder, M6 tool one, end of block insert, and hit go. And what I got is an indicator. Uh, and I'm gonna throw this bad boy in there. So what I'm gonna do guys, is I'm just coming over and I'm just running my Z down and it doesn't matter where. Make sure the tip of my indicators, you know, not straight down, it's in its proper angle. And I'm gonna hit it, I just wanna hit zero on my indicator. I wanna see it read something. There it starts moving. And I'm gonna twist it to zero. Go back up, come back down. All right, that's all I care is that the indicator's touching. Now what I do is I wrote, write two numbers down. I call this four and a half and I call this my fixture. So on every job setup, I go 4.5 and then fixture. Wherever my Z is at and I set my zero, I wanna know where the machine's at Z-wise. And right now I'm 11.316. So minus 11.316, I write that number down. Now I'm gonna just come straight up over to my block. And now that it's reading, I go back to zero and now I wanna write this number down. And now this is my fixture number. So minus 9.7793. I do a little math. 11.316 subtract 9.7793 equals 1.536. It's just numbers, it's just math, it's just add and subtract. If you can count to 10, you can do this stuff. And this number right here is basically an inch and a half, right? If you're a carpenter, inch and a half. I am an inch and a half higher at this point, then I am at this point. So every tool in this thing is gonna drop down an inch and a half or actually raise up an inch and a half to start machining anything. I need to tell it to the computer. And this is where I would tell it. So this is my offset G54. And all that is is where is my zero? Where am I gonna start my program from? And we are starting our program from the back side of the jaw and to the left side of the part. And that's where I have a stop. So solid jaw, stop side is my zero, which I've already picked up. We'll show you that another date. Uh, and then this is my height. 
but he wants me to drop five thou on his uh, setup sheet after I get my height, and that's just to clean it up. So I've already got my numbers in there. This is how we do it. All right. Put my setup blocks. Take my indicator back out. And we're gonna do this more for you guys. Get more in depth. I just wanted to kind of this time to show you a rundown of how it's done in the real world, man. So, I kind of talked with Alec. He gave me a setup sheet. I have all the tools in there. I set all my tools. My zeros are set. Um, I previously did a dry run without a part in there. If it's gonna crash without a part, maybe you shouldn't put a part in there first. So that's kind of, they have dry run uh, buttons you can press. I just take the part out, cruise right through. So we're gonna actually start machining a part and I gotta set my coolant lines. Um, so that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna, well, 215 is the die jet, and I believe that's the first one he's grabbed, so. Oh, oops. M6, tool 15. And I'm just gonna set my coolant lines. All right, to run my program, I gotta click it on auto. This is his program. A lot of times we put notes. So I'm gonna go into edit right now. Um, this is Alex program number. Output is absolute. One parts program. First tool is in spindle. X and Y, top, back, left of stock. Z0 minus 5,000 uh, below top of stock. I think we did all that. So I'm gonna hit auto. 100%, 100%, my rapid, I got down to 25. This little machine hauls butt. And again, I'm gonna talk about butt puckering a little bit. When you run your first part, you don't know, man. We call it fat fingering. Sometimes you put in the wrong decimal point, maybe the speeds and feeds are wrong. Until you get your first one done, you're always kind of nervous about it. So that was a two inch die jet. Um, and die jet just means the type of cutter, the brand of it, but we use a lot of these. Uh, I think we got three or four of these same cutters. So I have an M1 on and what this does, after every tool change, it pauses for a second, stops, and you literally have to hit the machine go button again for it to change tools. Just so you can, in case you walk away while you're testing something out, it's not gonna grab something and crash. This machine, this machine goes to the back corner, the front corner actually, every time it does a tool change because uh, it's got the rotary table on it, the fourth axis. And depending on what you have in there, it doesn't wanna crash into that if you have a longer tool in there. So it's pre-programmed to come out of the way and then grab the next tool. All right, this is the spot. We're gonna go spot. It's getting enough coolant on the tip of that, which I'm not gonna adjust those couple lines. So just spotted for the drill. Hang on. So a lot of the things we do are stainless, uh, what we do here. Um, we run a lot of carbide. 
or insert, inserted carbide. Uh, so when we switch to high speed, you gotta slow things down. This is a high speed drill. We had a high speed uh, spot in there earlier. And a lot of materials we do, it's 304, stuff's really tough. And again, all this stuff, this was a bar stock. You know, you just think about, this is just a square block. It's uh, in a 10 foot, 12 foot bar comes in. We got to saw cut it to the length, deburr it, figure out how we want to process this. Um, you can go with different tools. You could uh, in mill these uh, drilled through holes in if you wanted. That's the thing with a machinist. Um, you can't really bark at these guys if they're the ones writing the programs. You're trying to bark at a creative person to go faster, doesn't work. All right, we're gonna do some hogging now. Actually, I almost crashed that baby. You want to get down in there? Look how close that uh, cutter body is. Yeah. And my flute length isn't long enough. You see that? So let's blow this air a little bit. Well, you got a cutter here and then shank here because I just got a short uh, end mill and it would have shanked out here and just broke it. So this is again, I haven't ran apart yet. Uh, I had this cutter in here and it called for a half inch. So I was like, we're good. Let's go talk to Alec. His uh, program doesn't make sense. Alec Schroeder, I do. you screwed this up. That I know. Hey, lunch can wait. Hey, come check. All right, we don't have tool 19 on the first program. And we got tool 19 and I almost shanked out. Oh, true. this, this is, is true. This is why you make the big bucks. I don't make big bucks. I have lots of stress and this is to prove it. I almost shanked out, sucker. That's not good. All right, what do we, what do we need to do? I guess I just won't eat. It's not even eating time. All right, I'm gonna pull this out real quick. So butt puckering, I should have let it crash. Look at Alex on the spot now. Damn it. But again, when you're running your first part, this is real life, this is what happens. Not to me. All right, guys. So we caught that one. First rule of Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. No, never trust anyone, right? So what happened is I had this end mill in there because it was in the machine and he just called for a half inch end mill. But we're gonna go around and there's no flute length. The flute length is this length. And I don't have enough to go around that whole part at depth. So it almost made a boo-boo. So we changed it out and we should be good. So I gotta reteach this. Most of your time, people are gonna crash. They went from the short one, which depending on where, how you set it, and they changed it out and sometimes they're just gonna hit go they're gonna skip past resetting that tool because they're stressed out, nervous, however it is. Don't forget to set your tool. Remember what you're doing. All right, handle. Tool back in. I gotta clean off my spot. Grab my four and a half inch block. And I'm gonna quickly do this to catch us up. 
All right, coming down. Don't want to come down on my block. Come up, up, up. Pretty good. So there's my tool 19. I'm gonna go back into my setup page. Page down, go down to tool 19, 16, two it used to be, now it's on 15. So I'm gonna hit measure, 15, 7, 1, 8, 15, we're good. So move this out of the way, go back to my program. All right, I'm gonna do a mid program start. Uh, I know what tool that is. So instead of letting all my other tools rework itself, we're gonna start in the middle. So I found where I'm at and I, there's an M1 means stop after a tool change. So I'm already there. I'm gonna switch it back to auto and I'm gonna hit go. It's not doing anything. But here it's blanking and it's basically telling me, hey, you wanna start from the middle of a program? And I do, because I'm crazy like that. No. Nope. So I'm saying yes. Here we go again. So everything kind of looks kosher this time. So I'm gonna shut the doors, blast the coolant back on and see what it does. So to get back to this stuff, um, you know, again, you gotta go after this work that you're capable of doing. Um, quote it, get the work, Order the material, get the material in, cut it, deburr it, figure out how you want to process it, which means program it on the Gibbs cam. Come here, set your tools up, load your program, get everything going. And at the end of the day, you're taking a piece of bar stock and you're making something useful, like most people can't do. It's not all awesome but it's a good feeling that you're capable of doing that. So anyone can do it. It's just one step at a time. All right, we just roughed that puppy out. Let's go probably to the finisher. What are these guys doing? Hey, there is no playing games in this place. What are you guys doing? Running a test, running a test. Turbulence, give it to me. Ho! <laughs> hey Ben, what you doing, man? What are you gonna go get for lunch? Well, first I gotta run the ace. What? Yeah. He literally is gonna run the ace. Ben runs with a helmet on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Only occasionally. Hey, don't have his fat bike tire. There's no, not enough snow. We make Ben deliver parts on this thing too. I've like, <laughs> he puts parts in his satchels and uh, he's off. We just finished our op on this one. Um, let me blow this baby off. And when I when I say op, I'm just talking about operation. So, to make these things or parts or manufacture anything, you can't always just grab the part and do everything at once and it pops out and is finished. Um, the more axes you have, if you had a five axis, you still have to hold on to something. So our first operation, this is what it looks like. Kind of still doesn't look like this, but what do we have? So right now I have to double check and measure some things. So our width is done. You see this all the way around. So this is done and I'm going to check it on the print what I need to be, and I'm right there. These things have to be exactly. Those are done. Which the slot width is done. Uh, from here to here is done. Now we're gonna make it round, but we're gonna do that after. So our next one, so what we did is we decked it, we went all the way around, we roughed in this slot, which is pretty deep for a smaller cutter. We finished it, uh, we deburred all the way around in this slot. Um, and our next thing is we're going to take this little chunk off. So we're going to deck this and our finished height of the part will be done. But this also has a tapped hole. This side has a reamed hole. Um, so we don't want to do this cutout because we want to 
clamp on it this way to do this work. So we don't want to just clamp on this small part. We want to clamp on the whole thing. So we're going to deck the bottom and then we're going to do this work here and then we'll come back and rough this out. So hopefully, hopefully you guys learned something from this um, and we're going to get more in depth and get better at this. Hope you guys enjoyed, man. Check you later.